they're yeah crazy people cool well uh well yeah you know we're live we're uh we're here on facebook thanks to everybody who's tuning in for our interview uh this is jonathan with captain experiences and i'm here with uh my good buddy spain short of teton valley lodge what's up spain what's up what's up good to be here man um yeah cool glad to do it well yeah you know and if uh if i just look down over here it's because i'm referencing all these uh these questions i've got for you um but you know we can kick it off by just uh having you introduce yourself um name where do you operate out of that sort of thing yeah so like you said i'm spain short uh, i grew up in atlanta have been out here this is going on my eighth summer out here i uh, have been guiding with teton valley lodge for the last four so our operations based on uh, South Fork of the Snake River, the Henry's Fork, which is the North Fork of the Snake River, and the Teton River. So that's kind of what we do. Yeah, you can have one. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's Peter, the roomie. Awesome. Yeah. What's up, Peter? What's up? How's it going? Good to see you again. It's Jonathan. Good to see you again, Jonathan. Yeah. yeah. Good um, luck with your. Uh, yeah. Well, We'll have to we'll have to touch on our our trip there. Uh, you know, uh, last fall that was a great time. Uh, but so did did you grow up? Uh, you know, fishing out there? Or did you grow up kind of fishing? You know, North Georgia? Or what was what was that like? Uh, kind of yeah. Learning so how to fish fly fish? The, yeah, the first time I did not grow up fishing out here. Uh, the first time I came out here was with a group of I think there are ten of us, maybe maybe more. I'd never seen the place. I actually wasn't mm -hmm. gonna come, but some of my best buds from high school had decided they were going to go right before college to come out here and just live for the summer. Awesome. And I didn't have any plans that summer and they had a buddy drop out. And uh, I think it was David Feynman or Rad Spencer uh, called me up and was like, we got an extra spot if you want to join us. So uh, yeah, we drove out here had, having never seen the place. Didn't wow. really know out here. Didn't know anything about the fisheries. Um, yeah, we just came out here and kind of explored the area and here I am. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so, you know, who who would you say introduced you to fishing from the get go? Yeah, my mom is the one who introduced me to fishing, actually. Cool. So we grew up. There's a local uh, my neighbor's pond was like five minutes away from my house. And my mom and I, my brother would go sometimes. But normally my mom and I were obsessed and she would drive hmm. and kind of got it my start to drive the gas station just go buy some shiners some live bait and we'd right. chuck them out there we catch bass all the time we'd go probably five times a week and then uh she kind of grew up she, her dad was a big uh outdoorsman big bird hunter um dabbled in fly fishing as well super super good outdoorsman uh he didn't have any um didn't have any sons. He just had daughters. And so she kind of did everything that a son would do. She grew up hunting and fishing. And so oh, she kind of passed that down to me, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so, I mean, can you, can you kind of like walk us through the journey, um, you know, from uh, I guess just showing up one summer, uh, you know, after high school or whatever and, and in Jackson hole and then becoming a guy, uh, you know, cause that doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty wild stories from that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so got start fishing in Georgia, got a guide position from a place called Blackhawk up in uh, Clarksville, Georgia, started guiding up there, cool. walk bait trips on private water. Uh, big stocked fish, they have some wild fish, very little natural reproduction up there, but um, some wild fish, but mainly big, big stock fish. Mm -hmm. um, and David Feynman's dad, actually, Brad Feynman, got me hooked up up there. He a big client up there took a lot of his uh clients from work up there they'd always have a good time and yeah. he knew how obsessed i was with fishing so he got me started out there and then once i kind of had a few summers out in jackson and working in fly shops one of the guides i was booking trips in a fly shop and one of our guides transferred from uh, a shop in jackson to a um, guide outfitter teton valley lodge and driggs and he called me up and said they were looking for some younger guides to come in and kind of revamp the place, um, you know, bring in some younger dudes to new clientele and all of that. So I called up Brian Barry, having never met him uh, and just knew his family had to own the lodge for this is their hundred and first year. So they've wow. got a huge, huge history there. Yeah. So it's pretty intimidating to call him up. I was a dude that didn't know how to row a boat. 
I thought I knew how to fish. I didn't really know how to fish. Uh, thought I did and called him up and was like, I want to come guide for you. He's like, well, you have a boat. And I was like, nope, don't have a boat. Like, no, you know how to row? He's like, no, I don't know how to row. He's like, do you know how to fish? And I was like, I think so. He's like, do you have a truck? And I was like, no, I don't have a truck. <laughs> so I didn't really have anything you need to have. And Just a dude who kind of knows how to fish. Dude who kind of knows how to fish. And, and can super pick into up the it. phone. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I can pick up the phone and call. And I was like, you know, five, 10 minutes went by in this conversation. Everything I could have answered was the opposite of probably what I should have said. And at the end of the call, I was like, well, great, buddy. When can you get here? When can you start? I was like, what? You're gonna hire me? Like, I don't see why not. You sound like you can talk to people. It's like, wow. I guess so. So, so met him in uh, May, four years ago. He spent and his guide staff spent pretty much every day with me on the water for three months. We trained every stretch of river you could never think of, um, you know, learned as much in a three month, four month span as you can learn in a lifetime from some of their 40 year old veteran guides to some of their guides that, um, were younger, but had a lot of experience. So that was really cool to just get that start. Not, it was pretty lucky, honestly, to yeah. get going like that. That's awesome. I mean, that, that story is so cool. Um, you know, it just goes to show that, you know, the most important part about guiding, uh, at least in the experiences I've had with guides is that, you know, it's all about, you know, being personable and interacting with people, just making sure they have a good time. Uh, but in, in terms of that training, um, like, what was that like? Is there, you know, a set curriculum where it's like, Hey, you know, first we're going to learn how to row the boat. Uh, then we're going to, you know, work on, you know, improving people's casts or was it just like, Hey, uh, let's spend a few, three months on the water and, and kind of learn through osmosis. Yeah, the training. So there's guide schools out in uh, right. the West that you can pay and go to guide school. You can learn a ton. Teton Valley Lodge's guide school is a little different. They kind of throw school you in hard knocks. And yeah. <laughs> and you know pretty quickly if you're going to, if Brian's going to keep you on or not. If there's a stretch of river called Bear Gulch, which is on the upper, uh, it's the lower Henry's Fork, but it's the upper portion of it where the brown trouts are. Um, still living in lots of rainbows as well but uh it's a big boat slide you got to push your boat into the water and we did that i think he sent me in there for the first oh, i think i've seen those videos yeah yeah he sent me in there 10 days in a row to start my training <laughs> and it was pretty much hell i mean i have a huge scar on the back of uh on my back uh i got run over by a boat on that slide and oh, i was man. just bleeding profusely and looked at it and i was like brian what do we do like i've I need probably 50 stitches and we're in the middle of nowhere. And he's like, I don't know, buddy, I guess we'll keep fishing. <laughs> so, uh, so I think he felt bad for me in that aspect. So he gave me the job and that's kind of what training was like with the lodge. You really, you know, you're rowing the South Fork at 25,000 CFS where mistakes are met with flipping a boat. So you got to, wow. you kind of wow. thrown in the fire and you, yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. I don't know if you can see the the Facebook comments, but Claire just commented, did you ever get hurt while training? So I think you guys have some kind of crazy telepathy going on. Cause we just, just nailed that one. Um, that's funny. Um, so yeah, you know, can you, can you describe your, uh, your trips, um, you know, out there, what, what they're like half day, full day, um, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So the lodge offers, so every guide in Idaho has to work for an outfitter. So there's right. no, freelance guiding. So it kind of keeps the pressures off the river. Every guide that is guiding has been checked off on that stretch of river that they're working on, right. uh, has passed all their safety, first aid, CPR, everything like that. So it keeps, uh, keeps things very uh, streamlined. Everything's very safe. Um, the guide trips we offer are half day and full day trips. Uh, you can pay, um, I think it's, I think this year it's five ninety five for a full day for two people, everything included. Um, so you, Pretty much can get started uh, when the guy or when the client wants to be picked up and you, you know, call it quits when for the lodge, pretty much when the sun's going down, it's a long day. Uh, cool. But it's yeah, we offer half day trips as well. Some walk wade stuff if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. So, but so how many of the trips are out of the boat. Cool. Yeah. So how many how many different stretches, uh, you know, do you guys fish? Yeah, we fish the entire South Fork, uh, the snake, which goes from Palisades Dam all the way down to the con or all the way down to, you know, past Manan. Uh, we can go all the way down the Henry's Fork 
we pretty much do everything from Island Park all the way down to St. Anthony, which is in so many river miles. And then the Teton, we Teton's really cool. It offers uh, anything from dry fly, spring creek fishing to massive rapids in a canyon. Uh, so everything on the Teton as well. It's, mm -hmm. You could fish a lifetime on these rivers and never fish the same stretch twice. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's that's uh you know where we wanted to get into next. It's uh you know what's what's the fishing like uh you know as as things kind of you know roll into spring now. Um you know what what can people be expecting to throw? What can they be expecting to catch? That sort of stuff. Yeah. You know, flow, snowpack, all that. Yeah. Spring fishing out here is pre runoff, so depends on how much snow we really get in the mountains. Kind of controls what's going to be available to fish, but pre runoff fishing can be spectacular. Um, the Henry's fork is kind of the gem of the springtime. It's controlled by, it's fed, fed by something called the big springs. Uh, so it's all spring water coming up, but then it goes through a series of dams. So the water settles in the springtime. So, excuse me, it's actually a um, awesome springtime fishery. Very cool. So that's probably the first thing that is going to fish great for us. Um, the South Fork before runoff also fishes awesome. Uh, spring is when rainbows and cutthroats spawn. So pre-spawn fishing on South Fork and on the Henry's can be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, they shut the rivers down or the tributaries to the rivers down in June for spawning for native cutthroat trout. So that's really cool to see that they're doing all these efforts to protect the fish yeah. that's supposed to be here. Yeah. Very cool. And then things, things heat back up, you know, come July, August into the fall yep. it's, it's fantastic so you i've been fishing the henry's for probably a month now this uh winter already so i started fishing at early march uh it's kind of day to day if you get a really warm day and not so cold of a night the fishing can be awesome um and then as you move into may that's really or april right now if you get you can get some really good blue wing and midge fishing and then in may this kind of first big wave of dry fly fishing is Mother's Day caddis. And then you get into stonefly stuff. And that's probably the most fun time of the year for the Henry's Fork is awesome. when salmon flies and golden stones are going on. And then cool. once the Henry's stops firing and, you know, things slow down over there, that's the time to be on the South Fork. It's kind of prime time. Uh, salmon flies over there and then the water levels are receding and the fishing, PMD fishing is as good as it gets. Nice. Uh, yeah. so what what would you think what would you say is unique about about fishing the henry's fork henry's is the coolest river in the united states for sure it's uh the opportunities on that river are endless you can go out any day and have a chance of catching a two-foot fish on a dry fly it's wow. as cool as it gets um wait what was your question again i got kind of sidetracked just just what's unique about fishing out there just just that it's the best yeah, it's just so day to day. One day you can go out there and kind of get your ass kicked and not catch anything. And the next day seems like the same conditions. Every fish in the river is feeding. You know, you go to one area and one day there's no fish there. And the next day you return and there's a thousand fish you can dry flies. It just, it's what keeps you coming back. You see it when it's at its best and there's nothing else you want to do. That's awesome. But it's also one of the hardest rivers to guide because if you catch it on a bad day, you look like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, it's tough. Um, let's see. So, uh, you know, what, what would you say makes, makes a trip with Spain short different than, you know, another guide or, um, anything else out there? What makes you unique? Oh, uh, I think connecting with my clients, uh, having a good time in the boat, you know, some days we're going to catch so many fish, you know, other days fishing is going to be slow. We're not going to catch a ton of fish, but we've, we seem to always have a good time. We always, I, in my four years of guiding for the lodge, a lot of people day in or year in, year out are fishing with me. Same time of year, have my groups that come in. I think just connecting with people and having a good time in the boat, whether we're catching a ton of fish or we're catching a few, um, it doesn't really matter. We're always going to have a good time. That's awesome. Um, yeah. can, can you describe, uh, you know, the lodge in a little more detail? Um, you know, what's, what's kind of, uh, you know, like the team vibe, what's, what's the vibe for guests when they get there? Um, just what's kind of the all around experience. Yeah. So the lodge is the oldest outfitter. I don't know if it's the oldest outfitter in the States or if it, it's been around for this, the hundred first year. So right. it's a family owned business. Uh, Brian and Joe Selberry are as good of owners and bosses as you could ever ask for. They give their guides everything you could need. If you, you know, I showed up, I didn't have a boat. Brian builds boats. He was like, you can use this one, buddy. Wow. Uh, 
you know, if you're doing whitewater, I don't own a raft. He is building rafts this year. I think he's throwing 11 custom made rafts out onto the water this year. And wow. he has all these super pumas that you can take if you need flies. Every guy at the lodge is tying flies all winter and we have a custom selection of flies you can use. And the lodge can hold 40, I think it's 40 guests this year. So we have uh, lodging for 40 people. We have about 20 to 25 guides on staff. So we've got a pretty big operation going on. Um, all the permits you could ever want um, can throw as many, you know, we can throw so many people on the water and still have our space. And yeah, it's a pretty incredible operation to have. That's amazing. Um, so what, what's it like for you when you, uh, when you put somebody on their first fish? Ooh, uh, it's pretty cool. Honestly, I like watching people catch fish more than I like catching fish now. And that's not because I've caught all the big fish I want to catch or whatever. It, I, it's just really cool seeing someone catch fish. You know, you're as a guide and person rowing the boat, you're just as much catching the fish as they are, whether yeah. they realize it or not. Uh, so it's, it's pretty cool, you know, see someone it's, it's a real possibility or a lot of times, uh, someone new to fly fishing can pick it up in a matter of a few hours and be catching fish that same day, like catching a lot of fish. So it's really cool. That's awesome. Um, let's see is, uh, I mean, so, so why do you love what you do? Why do you love guiding? What, what gets you up in the morning? Chance of a big fish on a dry fly for sure. Uh, that's what, that's what it's about. That's what fly fishing is about. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it's about, man. Catch big fish on dry flies. It's as fun as it gets. Uh, you know, you're out on the river. You're floating. If you're on the Teton, you're probably going to see somewhere to – if you're on the upper Teton, you're going to see up to – I think one of our guides saw 10 bull moose in one day up there. You're always wow. going to see wildlife. Wow. You're outside. You're on the – probably the, the south fork of the snake is the prettiest stretch of water of all time. You're in there. You're in a 20-mile – 20 mile long Canyon. You're, you're, once you're in there, you're in there. You don't have self self service for some of it. That's so nice. You just nice. take in what, where you are. It's as cool as it gets. That's awesome. Um, yeah. is there, is there one individual memory if you had to choose that, you know, sticks out to you as your favorite memory as a guide? Uh, funniest memory I have. I don't know if Craig Walker's listening, but <laughs> Craig was a uh, pledge brother in school. I got a bash on him a little bit. We had a great day. It was Craig and his dad, uh, Craig Sr., and we were in the boat. And it was crazy fishing on the Henry's Fork. It was, you know, those overcast rainy days you are you always want on that river. Every fish is feeding. They had never picked up a fly rod before, so they didn't know what they were doing. That didn't matter. We were catching fish. You know, they were big fish feeding. And I let Craig cast this fish for probably an hour, maybe more. This fish was huge. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he's never picked up a fly rod before. It's technical dry fly fishing. and. Anyways, we didn't get the fish to eat and dropped Craig off. It was an awesome day. He caught some big fish. I called up my buddy Milan. And I was like, dude, there's this huge fish eating on the Henry's Fork. <laughs> you went and caught his so, fish. <laughs> so Milan and I, once we had dropped, he was guiding on the Henry's as well that day. And we drove 45 minutes back to the lodge, dropped his clients off, jumped in his truck, drove 45 minutes back up there, launched the boat, rode down to that area. And those two fish were still sitting there and we, wow. we both caught them in there. It was pretty cool. No, <laughs> that's awesome. We're, we're going to have to see a pick on that. We'll, we'll throw yeah. it up on the Facebook page or something. That's hilarious. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Just catching up. So why, why do you think guiding is important? It's, you know, you can go out there and do it on your own. You can rent a rod. You can rent waders and you can go spend some time tangling and maybe catch a fish. If you hire a professional, whether it's through Teton Valley Lodge, whether it's through anyone in Idaho that guides, they're all professional. There's all, they're all great outfitters. All of them have awesome guides. Uh, if you hire one of them, you're just, your day is just going to be so much more relaxed, so much better. You don't have to deal with any of the logistics. You don't have to deal with the boat shuttle. You don't have to deal with lunch. You don't have to deal with you know, bring in your beer and you can just relax. You know, you're going to catch right. fish there. Everything's going to be taken care of and you don't have to deal with it on your own. You know, you got someone that knows where the fish are going to be. You, they know what flies need to be on and they know how to fish it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, some, some guy named Sam Boyd just commented uh, saying that he's mad that uh, your favorite experience as a guide wasn't, uh, you know, shoving him around the, uh, the river. 
<laughs> Sambo is as about as natural as a uh, angler as it gets. A, a natural, an absolute He's natural. A natural angler. Um, let's see. Um, how do you how do you feel about the future of fishing? Future fishing's changing for sure. Uh, fly fishing, you think of older gentlemen, cigar, hat on, fishing dry flies. Uh, it's changing. It's pretty sweet. You have a lot more women in the industry, which is awesome. It needs to happen. You have a lot more younger guides that are more friendly towards each other. Uh, a lot of the older guides uh, used to have some beef on the water with each other. They, you know, they thought the river was was theirs and they didn't want to see anyone else. And now you've got a lot more younger guides on the rivers out here. And, you know, once we're done guiding, they're probably all at the same bar grabbing a beer. So you're going to see them. Might as well be friends with everybody. So the sport is moving in the right direction for sure. You got a lot more uh, people getting into it. It's not just older people with money. It's not that expensive to get into it. You have a lot more women. So it's it's going in the right direction for sure. There's some stuff that needs to happen, but, but it's uh, it's moving correctly. That's awesome. That's great yeah. to hear. Yeah. Um, let's see. So this is uh, this is my favorite question to ask. Uh, but if you had one more cast to throw in your life, what would you throw and where would it be? If I had one more cast, it'd probably be on the Skeena in British Columbia to a steelhead swinging flies. That's as, yeah, it's as wild as it gets. It's, uh, it's pretty sweet when you catch one. You're probably not going to on that cast, but, uh, that's where it would be. Yeah. That's awesome. And that, that's, that's also a great segue into, uh, you know, some of your, uh, your travels. Um, you know, you've been up to British Columbia for steelhead. You've been, to, uh, down South to Tierra del Fuego. Uh, you know, what, what were those trips like, you know, how, how did they come about? You know, there's a lot of planning that goes into them. Can you just walk us through, you know, everything that, that leads up to, you know, hitting those rivers and physically being there to, to fly fish? Yeah. So there's trout fishing and then there's fishing for steelhead, sea run fish and adramus fish. You're trout fishing, you can expect to catch numbers. If you're fishing for sea run fish, you know, you catch a fish in a day. That's a good day. Uh, I guess three years ago, I had the chance to go up to British Columbia for almost a month. I lived in the back of Howard's van. He, Howard was a fishing <laughs> mentor out here and he's done it all. He's fished up there. Yeah, he's fished up there for 30 Howard's years. Uh, yeah, we slept in his van for almost four weeks. Uh, I went my first 10 days without a fish. The first 10 days I was in British Columbia, I didn't even Killer. get a bite. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but yeah, once I caught a fish, I was, that's what I wanted to do. First steelhead changed everything. Two-handed casting, long cast. Yeah, it's as cool as it gets. That's amazing. That's that's hilarious. Um, and then- Howard's van. You know, yeah, out of the van. I was living in Howard's van for, for a month. That's yeah. awesome. We did it again um, the following year as well. I think I went for- two weeks and the year after that. And then, yeah, just recently, like you said, went down to Tierra del Fuego. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I remember being up there in Jackson hole, you know, every, everyone was around at that, that one house for dinner and I was just kind of sitting there listening to you. And I think it was Howard. Um, you know, you guys were just going back and forth yeah. uh, and it was just cool to just listen to you guys talk about it. It's just a whole, whole nother level. It was really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the Tierra del Fuego trip, how did, how did that come across? Were you, were you guiding down there or? No, I wasn't guiding. So I've always wanted, I've always had an obsession with going down there. Those fish are huge. They're uh, 80,000, I believe it is, 80,000 sea run browns go into the Rio Grande every year, which is an wow. insane amount of fish. Uh, your catch rates are going to be high. The fish are big. You're throwing two-handed rods. Uh, it's, I think it's 300 miles from Antarctica. It's it's far south. Wow. As you can, it's as far Hop, south. skipping a jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's as far south as you can get. One of the uh, gentlemen that was on the trip, his bags, once we got off the plane down there, his bags got put on a uh, cruise ship to Antarctica. And so, Ooh. so we, so luckily somehow we got him back, but uh, yeah, it's, it's down there. Fishing's really, <laughs> yeah. Fishing's really cool though. Uh, it's windy as can be. Uh, some days you can get days without wind, but, uh, for the most part, you're thrown into a lot of wind. It's part of it though. It's yeah. what makes it special. It reminds, it's a lot like Wyoming landscape though, except for the mountains kind of, um, windswept areas and big open river, a lot of fish. Yeah. I'm going back next year. So I can't wait for that. Nice. Nice. How, how long were you down there for? We went down there for 10 days. Uh, 
I wish I could stay for the entire season and do three months down there. That one of the, the head guide actually said I could come work down there, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going to go over well. <laughs> we, we don't have to touch on yeah. that. <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Yeah. So I went down to Cal Tapin, which is the first lodge on the Rio Grande. Uh, what's cool about Cal Tapin is they have the Grande in their backyard, uh, the famous Sea Run River, but then they have the Rio Menendez, which is the main tributary to the Grande. And it's kind of the size of a small spring creek. So you can catch, they caught a 26 pound sea run fish in the Jeez, river wow. 15, 15 feet wide. So pretty, pretty crazy. That's insane. Yeah. And wow. they get, it's very tidal. Uh, so the lower you are on the river, the big tides push fish in, big full moons will push fish in as well. And uh, Cal Tapin's a little ways up the system. So you really need some high water and, um, tides to bring the fish in and when we were there i was with john rex and john rex fuqua and we hit it perfect we uh pretty much caught fish in every session we were out there wow caught fish up to 18 pounds i mean Jeez. couldn't have asked for a better trip that's incredible that is the trip of a lifetime truly yeah um, we were there in middle of january so their season's january february march and then a little bit of april uh, they had to close down this year because of uh, you know, Corona stuff going on yeah. there. Guests yeah. couldn't make it down there, but early in the season, you're getting really fresh fish from the ocean. Um, later in the season, those fish are more colored up kind of the classic looking brown trout in the fall. If it's out here. So there's different times to be there, you know, different reasons to be in each month. Um, so each month is different. So I went in January next year, I'm going back in March. So I'm going to get to see a completely different fishery. That'll be awesome. Yeah. We look, yeah. uh, look forward to seeing those pictures. We threw, we threw one up on the Instagram. It's just an incredible yeah. fish. My God. Um, <clears throat> awesome. Well, cool. Uh, so now we just have a, a few, uh, a few rapid fire questions. Um, so uh -oh. just like what, whatever comes, uh, you know, first to mind. Um, so what's your favorite body of water to fish? The Henry's nice. Um, yeah. if you had to be doing something different, what would it be? If I had to be doing something different, I don't know, man. I don't think I could live without living at close to these rivers. There you go. Good answer. That's what comes to mind. Yep. Um, what other hobbies do you enjoy outside of fishing? Uh, I like bird hunting a lot. Uh, I get to go bird hunting out here. There's some awesome stuff to do. A lot of grouse, chucker, pheasant. Um, so, yeah. Very cool. Play a little golf too, right? Yeah, play a little golf, play a little tennis. Nice. Um, do you have a nickname? And if so, how'd you get it? Yeah, Squain. Uh, <laughs> I got it from when I think I was maybe 10. Uh, I was jumping off a, the pool was closed. And I was jumping off the high dive and in front of the lifeguard for some reason, I thought it'd be a good idea to jump off that uh, high dive, jumped into the water. They took me back to find my parents and the, the lady who had my arm. She's like, what's your name, son? I was like, my name's Spain. And she's like, okay, Squain. So, <laughs> that's where Squain comes from. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I'd never heard that story. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have a favorite song or band right now? Oh, I don't know. I haven't been listening to much music recently. Uh, I might have skipped that and come back. Okay. Got to skip it. No worries. Um, let's see. Where was I? Uh, favorite movie. Favorite movie. Uh, God, these are tough, man. So many good ones. <laughs> Nailing uh, all the fish, all the fish questions, and then we get into the pop culture. Yeah, yeah favorite movie. Um, yeah, I'm coming back to those too. I'll get back to you on those. All righty, sounds good. Um, favorite food. Uh, we've been eating a lot of Thai food recently. So many good Thai spots out in Jackson. Probably Thai good food. Answer. Good answer. Little pod Thai, whatnot. Um, favorite drink. Probably beer. Yeah. <laughs> beer. We'll leave it at that. Um, let's see. Um, favorite sports team? The dogs, baby. There you go. Go Good dogs. answer. Go, go dogs. Um, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? One superpower. Hmm. Probably to fly so I could, you know, go all over and fish all over. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 
Yeah, every every guide somehow ties it back to fishing one way or another. It's you got to, man. Uh, I've heard I've heard X ray vision so they can you know see all the fish. Yeah. Um, being able to hold their breath forever, um, <laughs> stuff like that. It's hilarious. Um, let's see. What was your last Halloween costume? Last Halloween costume. Uh, what was, what were we? I think we were, shoot. I can't, I got in trouble for not dressing up and I think I threw on like, uh, uh, someone's car. Hold on. I think I threw on, uh, some kind of basketball outfit. There you go. Good stuff. Can you hear that car in the background? Yeah. Yeah. It's all good though. It's just a little rumble. Um, what do you want for Christmas? What do I want for Christmas? Uh, maybe a plane flight to Argentina would be great. There you go. Not yeah. bad. Um, can you name one of the seven dwarfs? Uh, no, I don't think I can. <laughs> Come Dwarf? on. Not letting you skip this one. I don't know, man. I don't know. Nothing. Uh, I don't know the dwarfs, man. What, what are you going to do tonight? Uh, there's not much to do. Uh, probably go somewhere outside. <laughs> I was, I was nudging you towards sleepy. Uh, sleepy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know any of them. Oh man. You get an F. Um, uh, this will be a good one. Uh, how many pull-ups can you do in a row? I haven't done pull-ups probably since gym class. I don't know. 15. Oh, solid. 15 that that might be the high water mark for uh for our guides on that one um is lebron james or michael jordan the best basketball player ever i didn't really get to grow up watching michael so i mean michael's michael but i didn't get to watch him live cool yeah. so lebron we'll mark you down there um what's the biggest fish you ever caught uh sea run fish Steelhead, probably. I think I caught a 38 inch steelhead. That was, Jeez. That was my biggest. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, yeah, that's about it. Um, you know, we'll let everybody kind of post their questions if they have any. Um, but, uh, you know, just the last thing is do you want to give a shout out to the troops? Yeah, man. All the, uh, all the guides that I work with over here, pretty incredible cast. Uh, people come see us, come fish with us. I know it's, tough to travel but a lot of the guys could really use it if you come fish and it'll be a good time awesome yeah cool man uh, well yeah you know that that about yeah. wraps it up enjoyed it how really many appreciate uh, it. can you see how many views we got uh not yet and you know a lot of them uh start racking up uh afterwards let's see let me see if i can find it i'm sure it's think, like uh, one or two million by now that's pretty good yeah. I'm looking at the comments. I'm looking at the comments now. I didn't see, realize you could see those. Yeah, we've what, got. What Sam say? Let's see. I don't think I've ever caught a fish without a guide. I know for a fact New has it. <laughs> I think he had to look up uh, the definition of anadromous. Um, so I think I caught. I think that one while he was here. We we love to uh, we love to educate. Uh, um, Jeff said no music. Come on, bro. Jeff's a great musician. So. Claire just Michael. asked for you, Claire just asked for your craziest story on the water. Craziest story on the water. Probably scariest story on the water was in the Teton Canyon, high water. I flipped a raft. Oof. And that was no bueno. I thought, yeah, it was uh really big water. I messed up. I went sideways into the we call it the chute. And that was probably the craziest experience. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Well, that's wild. Um but yeah, we've got we've got seven whole viewers live right now. Um, that's big so time. That's solid. But you know, two two almost two fifty have tuned in. Um, you know, over the uh, the span. So that's good Sweet, stuff. Um, yeah, man, and I'm sure this is uh it's going to go viral uh, as soon as we post it on the uh, the Captain Experiences page. Well, thanks for um, having me. But yeah, really enjoyed it, Spain. This was fun. Thanks a lot for doing it, and uh, you know, hopefully we can do it again soon, and you know, touch base on the uh, the spring fly fishing up there. Yeah, I look forward to it, man. Talk to you soon. Awesome. Later.